Hi there, I'm Esther from Business Analysis Excellence. Today, I'm going to do a very short tutorial about use cases, specifically looking at use case diagrams and use case descriptions. Let's jump in. Okay, so let's start. Use case descriptions um, and use case diagrams. So if we start with the very basics of what is a use case, so here I've got a short definition of a use case is a list of actions or event steps, typically defining the interactions between a user and a system to achieve a particular goal or function. So an example of a use case, if we think about a timesheet system, could be enter timesheet details. But now more specifically, what is a use case diagram? Now, you may have seen these diagrams at work or perhaps online in your research around what is use cases all about. And let me read this to you. So a use case diagram is a visual representation of the interactions between system, users, and then these different use cases. We've got an example of a use case diagram, very simplified. But if we look at a timesheet system, we could say that the users or the actors will be the employee and the manager. And if we look at just three of the different functions or use cases that could be performed by the system, it could be enter timesheet details, approve timesheet, and validate project codes. Now, I'm not jumping into the exact nitty gritties of how to draw a use case diagram. I just want to give you a general feeling of what it's about. So it's all about describing the functionality that you expect the system to be able to perform. Now, what is a use case description then? So a use case description, as its name says, is really a way to take each of your use cases that you've identified and describe it in a lot more detail. So if you look at this template here, we've got a multitude of different variables that you should use when you start elaborating your particular use case. So we've got things like title, ID, description, actors. So who uses this use case? The benefits to the organization even. How often will this use case be used? And then what triggers this use case? So what does somebody have to do in the system for this use case to execute? What needs to be true? So what are the preconditions before the use case can start? And then post conditions, what will be true in the system after somebody has performed this function. What is the main scenario? So this is really the crux of your use case description. It's about describing step-by-step step what the user does and then what the system does and then what the user does and what the system does when you work through the use case or when you execute the use case. And that is like they say, the happy scenario. So it's the, what, what do we really expect in the ideal world? How do we want it to work? Then you also get alternative scenarios. So there, so there might be more than one way to achieve the result of this use case. And this is where you'll describe what other steps can you take and still receive, um, execute this particular use case. I mean, something you don't see on the page, but this is actually part of the template, is the exception scenarios. So those are the ones where you say, okay, if things go wrong, what should happen? And you describe that in a similar way. So that's really in a very quick nutshell, what is the use case description? But then how does a use case diagram relate to a use case description? It's actually quite simple. So you may have drawn your diagram because that's often where we start. We will go and we'll go and scope out all the functionality that we want the system to be able to perform. And that's when you draw your diagrams and you get that confirmed and everybody works out kind of who will be the users and what systems or what use cases will they be using. Now, for each of those use cases that you've identified on your diagram, you need to go and describe in this level of detail, how do you expect that use case to, this, to work? So each of the use cases on your diagram needs to have a use case description similar to this one with this kind of detail. So I hope that makes sense. Now, when do we use use cases? Now, in waterfall projects, uh, we would typically use this in the analysis phase of the project. When we've got an understanding of what the system is, what the solution will look like, 
Then we will start to scope out the use cases. So what are all the different functionality that we want this new system to be able to do? So that's in the analysis phase of a project or even the design phase of a project. But what about agile projects? Do we still use use cases and use case diagrams? Yes. So think about use case descriptions and use case diagrams just as another analysis technique. So regardless of whether it's waterfall or agile, you can still use this technique to elaborate user stories within an agile environment. So you may have a user story at a high level defined, but when you go and elaborate that particular user story, you may need this kind of detail to use the use case descriptions to elaborate on those user stories. So you can definitely still use it, but in an iterative way. So who does use the use case description? Business analysts, as you can imagine, system analysts also uses use case descriptions and diagrams. Software developers typically consume them. So we write them for the software developers. Um, that's what they were originally designed for. And then testers. So testers will specifically look at things like what are the triggers? What are the preconditions, post conditions, the main scenarios? They'll use these scenarios to help them develop their test cases. That's a really, really nice tool for the testers to be able to do their work as well. And then solution architects and subject matter experts might also get involved with use cases and use case descriptions. Where can you find this template? Well, lucky for you, on the Business Analysis Excellence website, baexcellence.com, we've got an amazing bundle of 50 different project templates that you can also get these two templates as part of that bundle. So go visit the site, have a look. This will save you a lot of time. It will skyrocket productivity on the project and it will just make your life easier because we've included a lot of instructions as to how to use the specific templates, including these ones, as well as provided some examples. So have fun, have a look at those and I'll see you in the next video.